and we're live. Hey guys, got with me today Fud, and I've got Chuck with me. Lyle's uh, had a, a previous engagement somewhere else, and uh, Brian's sick as a dog, so I've got Brian and Fud with me. Chris Wallace, if, if you don't know him by Fud. But uh, we're going to touch over a few things today, nothing nothing long and draw it out, but uh, boat safety. And we're going to turn it over to Fud. Hi, everybody. All right, yeah, the this week some of you may have seen Jason Bridges uh, with the Wheeler Cats Guide Service. You know, he talked about how he went out fishing for uh, some some bait, some shad, throwing the cast net, and in front of his deck was pretty slippery, and while throwing the cast net, he slipped right into the water. And at 42 degrees, no life vest on, he was pretty much getting sucked down, you know, had had only seconds to, to grab onto the boat, managed to fight his way to do it, pull himself up. Luckily, he had a one of the ladders on the back of his boat that you can get in and out of the boat on. Came back, posted about it to let everybody know that you just can't do things like that, not have your life jacket on, not going out, you know, by yourself in the, in the winter. and Just uh, boat safety is, is really really something to take serious you got to you got to respect what the boat is what the water is to you I mean it, it can it can take you in, in a heartbeat if you're not respectful of it so you know we're going to do some of the tips and things to help out with what you need to do some tips to to do it and make it easier um, let's see what we got here uh, if you're on a boat with somebody that's not necessarily your your boat, uh, you want to make sure that you know where the life jackets are. You know, don't be afraid to ask. Um, if the boat's moving, you know, put it on. Um, I know a lot of people are real bad about doing that. You know, they just they just don't put it on, or you know, if it's a big orange bulky one or something like that. I, I'm I'm. I do it myself at some points, but at the very least, you know, you want to have it very, very close at your feet. Like, I will step on mine sometimes and just have it attached to my foot or something like that. Um, I, I would more recommend you just wear it. And, and if you can, today, now they have the life vests that are very thin, uh, barely even tell that they're on, and it, it's something that's comfortable to wear all day, even over a coat, under a coat, whatever. Um... If you got kids with you on the boat, um, make sure that you're watching them, that you're that they know, you know, not to be running around on the boat. That especially if the boat is moving, not to get up or move around. Uh, just some some general safety things for them. Um, if you're on any water that you're unfamiliar with, don't go flying down the lake or the river. If you don't know it, you know you don't know that there might be some stumps or rocks or something. So just take your time, be safe. Uh, just a break in here a second. Uh, but there was a deal here about a year and a half ago, I think I posted, and uh, they were flying across the water, and they knew the lake. Yeah. And they got flying across there and hit one of them stumps, flipped the boat, and both of them died. They found them the next morning. And uh, neither one of them were wearing their life jackets at all. And uh, from one side to the other, it's not even a quarter mile. And, uh, you know, young people should be, and there wasn't any alcohol involved in it, but um, they they knew the lake, and, and they were just sailing across there and flipped the boat, and both of them died. Yeah, it's, it's, too, it's, it's unfortunate. Like I said, it's... You gotta you gotta respect the water in the lake and, and use common sense and you know it doesn't have to be a large body of water you know it can be a body of water that you know just uh, especially with kids involved I mean if any time I take my children on the boat with me they have a life jacket on at all times you know they're they're my kids you know and that's the way I think that any kid should have a life jacket on if they're on the water but uh. 
Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if it's your boat, you know, anybody that gets on it, you know, give them some rules. Let them know that they have to follow them while on your boat. Children, adults, just let them know the rules of the boat. Try to keep everybody safe on your boat. You know, you're responsible for them. Um, alcohol and boats don't mix. You know, a lot of a lot of incidents with boats happen with alcohol involved. You know, just don't do it. <laughs> That's pretty simple there. You know, I mean, if you're if you're out on the water, you don't really need to be drinking. It's just, it's you'll get a DUI just the same as driving a a, a car or truck or whatever. And you're jeopardizing everybody's life that's in that boat. Yeah, and other people's lives, you know. So, uh, CPR, you know, in on the water, uh, CPR is something that you definitely want to know. It's something that could very easily save somebody's life because most of the time, any body of water that you're at, it's going to take a while for any ambulance, any emergency vehicle to get to you. So if you can if you can do CPR, you know you, you're you might be what keeps that person alive. And so if you can learn it, you know, it, take a class, watch it online, do an online training course. You know, there, there's lots of ways that you can just learn it and and have that peace of mind. Um, be aware of your weather. So if the weather's gonna, you know, if you think there might be some Bad conditions coming in. Try to plan accordingly. You know, keep uh, if you can get a you know weather radio for the boat. Have a VHF radio for just in case anything does happen. You might be able to call out for some help there. But really, just being aware, trying to prepare for the weather conditions that is forecasted. Uh, always let somebody know where you're going to be at. You know what what body of water where you plan to be on that body of water if if uh, you can. And if you're not back by a certain time, you know, so that they have a place to start looking at. So normally give them a time frame of when you should be home, so that way they also know when to start looking. Um. I already talked about life vests, but another thing that a lot of boaters and people on the water don't use and utilize is the kill switch on their motor that attaches right to your throttle. And pretty much, like Paul was talking about, you know, if you're on a small body of water or a large body of water, you don't have that kill switch attached to your vest or body, whatever. You hit a stump, you go flying out of that boat. That boat keeps going, and I've also heard stories of where that boat actually turns and will, might even come to run you back over, and it'll just sit and run in circles on you. So if you have that kill switch, it's most of you know them as the the red coily cable that attaches right there, and it'll attack the other end of it attaches to the person on the boat. So that way, if they get thrown overboard, anything like that, it yanks that thing out of there and shuts the boat off. That's something that is way, way underutilized. And it really should be used a lot more. And I need to do it myself a little more. So um, one last thing from me on the boat safety, well, well, a couple more things. Anchoring, anytime you're anchoring in a body of water with a current, especially with a current, you do want to have a knife up near your anchor rope very close easily accessible I've seen many times where I was anchored up and a large tree was coming right for me and if you go to pull that anchor up and it's stuck and you can't pull it out if that tree hits that rope it can pull the whole front of your boat down and under the water in a matter of seconds I mean you need to be prepared for that and and can't be looking for a knife if you see that thing coming too late so if you always have a knife, either you can Velcro them, you know, like put the double, you know, sticky-sided Velcro on both sides of a knife and, like, the side of your boat up front and then one on the back. You'll always have it there and it, and it won't move anywhere and you'll have it easily accessible. Um, now, when I talk yeah. about... 
Go ahead. I, w- I would have never thought of that. Yeah. Or the, the reasoning for the knives, that makes sense. Yep. The last thing that I guess I would talk about would be uh, when I just talked about Jason Bridges falling in the water. You know, as soon as I, I read that, I thought, well, is there anything out there that could have helped that? I came across a Canadian company, and it's called Arctic Armor. You may or may not have heard of it. I never had until I found it. And it basically is a a uh, warm jumpsuit that, you know, like a jacket, pants, that is made with a material that is buoyant. And it's buoyant to the point of it can hold, I think it's a 280-pound man above water. And then if, say, two other people were to fall in the water as well, they could hang on to that man and it would still stay buoyant with three people. Oh, man. Well, I'm drowning. <laughs> I'm 300 pounds, man. I'm drowning. Yeah. But, <laughs> Don't they know, call that a Gumby suit or something? I know they got something like that on... Yeah, but I mean, this one, the what you're thinking of probably is very large and and you know not very easily worn and comfortable and everything. The the company Arctic Armor has made it. It's a very thin material. Uh, they have like three versions of it where it has one layer, two layer, and three layers. And I believe you know the more layers, the more more buoyant it is. Um, they they if you were to go to YouTube, you could just type in Arctic Armor. And you will see the videos of them, you know, just standing on the edge of the dock and falling in, wearing it, and they just float. It's, it's a pretty, uh, it, and you would think, you know, yeah, sure, it's nice and everything, and it's four hundred dollars for a suit or something. It's really not. It's not bad at all. Um, I want to say it's like anywhere from seventy to ninety dollars for the pants or the jacket, and you can buy both of them, you know, for under two hundred bucks right around there. So. And they're warm, from what I could tell. They're warm, uh, buoyant, something that, you know, if you're not even wearing your life vest, it would still save you if you fell in, most people anyway. <laughs> so I think the, the website for, for their, and I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but they're, uh, you know, just like I said, one of the things that I looked up when I seen that he had fell in, you know, what what is there out there might help somebody. At their, and their website's uh, www.idigear.com. And uh, it seems like it'd be a pretty nice product. So if anybody is looking for something like that, you know, they want something to be able to wear on a boat that's not super thick and can't move around, but it's warm and comfortable, and might save them if they ever did fall in, that would be something to look at. Yeah, because I just imagine hitting that that water and then having to to make that ride all the way back to your truck and. <laughs> yeah, i i have I have a story about that myself. I had a I had a boat. <laughs> I had a boat out on the Ohio River, and we had tied up to a wall, and it was uh, it was pretty cold. It was it wasn't summer or anything. It was cold water, cold air outside. Matter of fact, there was there was probably uh, foot whitecaps out there to, at the time. We went to take off, and my buddy was on the front of the boat, and he was a, he's a big guy too. He uh, he was holding a rope that was tied to that wall, and I put the boat in forward gear, and for whatever reason, I guess the linkage in my motor had came off for forward gear. But when I put it in forward to go forward, it actually shot me in reverse. Well, when it did that, of course. He was holding that rope on the wall, and it basically yanked him right overboard into the water. And I you took the boat out of gear and ran up there and grabbed a hold of his arm. I mean, about as fast as you could see a fat guy move. So I grabbed a hold of him, got him over to the bank. He he had, um, you know, so- soaked clothes on, freezing cold water. All I had was my trolling motor to get us back up to the creek and get to the ramp that we were at. So it took us a good 45 minutes to an hour to get back to the ramp. And now one of the things that I always do as well is bring a spare set of dry clothes with me. And I have it in the back mm-hmm. of my truck. I could have told you that. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that a couple times, too. Uh, Sean pulled up forward and me fall right out of the damn boat. Man. 
You got anything to add, Chuck? You're awful quiet over there. Um, I was going to talk about hooks and having kids in the boat. Um, what I do, uh, the the little foam earplugs you get that don't have the cord on them, I keep some of those in my boat because the you know you can't watch a kid every second, and the, they'll start swinging around them number ten circle hooks and number eights and stuff. Just stick that earplug on there about halfway. If they hit it hard enough, it may go on through and and get them, but. More, more likely it's just going to swipe right by them. It, but if that point barely gets a hold of them, it, it's going on in. Yeah. And uh, also always check and make sure the cutting device you have in your boat will cut through the hooks that you use. Some of these um, eagle claw hooks and these owner hooks, a lot of these hooks are real tough. And regular needle nose with cutters, and regular dikes will not cut through these. You have to have a pair of lineman pliers or something. So if you do have a hook that you got to push on through and cut the end off of it to pull the hook back out or whatever, make sure that you have something in the boat that will cut the end off these. Okay, little bitty, little bitty set of bolt cutters. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I got and some Sixes and pliers. tens are pretty tough. I got some big electrician lineman pliers, and you'll be surprised how hard you got to squeeze them before you can cut that hook in half. They're pretty tough. And myself, I wouldn't want to be out there uh, having to make it all the way back to the truck and then drive somewhere to get a hook out when I could have you know, cut it out of many. And also, um, I see a lot of guys that keep their fire extinguisher back in their bilge. And that's really not a good place to keep it. You need to keep it on the uh, front of your boat. Because if there's a fire, usually it's going to be in your build or at your boat motor, and you're not, you're not going to be able to get your fire extinguisher. Keep yeah, I think, I think here the fire extinguisher has to be easily accessible. It can't be in a compartment of any sort. It pretty much has to be open in the, in the boat somewhere. I think so. But yeah, that's both of those are yeah. The hook thing with the earplug, that's that's really good because I know kids like to swing some some poles and want to cast it themselves and whatnot. And I, I've seen that hook come real close. <laughs> I'm glad I've not got caught with it, or they haven't got caught with it. Well, another thing I might want to throw in there um, with animals and and kids, you know, kids are going to get into everything, and. Uh, here, let me add him back in here. Bounced out of there for some reason. But we're going to send it back to him. Um, the one thing that, that uh, I've had personal experience with was uh, uh, cats. And I had my fishing poles and stuff. We came in back when I fished with liver and and all that garbage. And uh, left the, the liver on the hook. And we had a cat that uh, was named Stupid. And he managed to knock the poles down and uh, uh, get the uh, hook in his mouth. So I ended up having to go to the vet and spend about 60 or $70. But... Um, the same thing with kids, man. You got to keep that tackle away from the kids, because it don't matter uh, how many times you tell them. If if you're not around, they're gonna go look. And I've run in that too much, and and finally just got to where I lock my stuff up. But um, there's just a lot of things. If you think about it before you do it, you'll find a reason not to do it. But uh. Other than that, I think it's pretty well all for the safety thing if you all ain't got any more on that part. You no, know, just use common yeah. sense. Keep uh, keep everything that you're supposed to have in your boat, like whistles and flares and, and you know, anything like that. Keep it all ready. Keep a first aid kit in your boat. There's lots of people I've heard that don't have that, and that's something yeah. simple that you should have. 
Yippers. I can't wait till I get my flare gun. <laughs> I may I may get in trouble with that. I bet may have to just stay with a whistle or something. That would get me in trouble. You know, they sell them at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. But uh yeah, that'd be fun. So anyway, I just said I ragged you what if what what's anybody up to and all that good stuff. Hello. What's that? Oh, I was trying to figure out what you all have been up to or kind of a little BS and before we stop it. Yeah, I've been up to a few things. Um some people may have known recently I posted on my Facebook account that I just got taken on as field staff with Humming Bird in Minkota. I feel real honored and proud that they decided to take a chance on me and I know they're not as far as I know there's not a lot of people that they've taken on in the catfishing world. They're real big into the you know the bass tournament guys and everything but I've I've talked with them for almost three years now. Um, kept up with them every single year and just let them know that you know, I was here, and I'm. You know, I, I purchased their products. I use their products anyway. Um, I got permission, even when I wasn't part of their team at all, to use their logos on my jerseys. And you know, this year they finally put me on, and I'm real excited. I can't wait to be able to get all the new gear and check it out, and be able to do videos and tips and help people with anything that I can in regards to So when you uh, make features. your first million, you help a brother out, right? Yeah, when I make my first million, I'll probably be helping lots of brothers out. <laughs> <laughs> like old uh, Chuck over there, he got him a sponsor too. He, he'll uh, drop my name in the hat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, besides, besides that, with me... Um, Chuck might not be able to hear us. I hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. You just ignored me then, ain't you? No. Oh. I was looking at that bait you got hanging on the wall back there behind me. I think it's that a catfish. Thing, that, that thing is a catfish. It actually talks. Is that a catfish that talks? Yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. Hang on here a minute. I think he unplugged his mic. Yeah. I just embarrassed myself saying that. <laughs> no, actually, we couldn't hear anything because you unplugged your mic. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm more my my talking fish. Justin got that for me. He's my right high hand, hand man getting everything loaded and all that stuff for me because I can't really do it myself. So he loads up all my equipment and makes sure I've got bait and all that stuff and then goes out fishing with me. And if I get into trouble, he's right there. So... Got to do that when you're disabled. Everybody sees me jump in a boat and think that I'm uh, I'm all right, but there's a lot more to it. Nine times out of ten, I get in the boat before it's ever backed into the water. I've uh, I've took a dive once, and that's something I don't want to do again. Yeah, yeah you know how that gap kind of gets wider between the boat and the the deck. <laughs> Shock. Yeah, I had that happen once. Well, as far as uh, the other stuff with me, I've, I don't, if you guys have seen pictures where I decided to make a, a website, and it's basically a just for fun website. If you've seen the pictures of somebody holding a catfish and that catfish does the dance on them 
and you get that picture snapped right when that picture does the dance on them or right when that catfish slaps the crap out of them in the face or whatnot. I got one of those uh, videos where um, Danny's big old catfish slapped him right in the face. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm creating a website called catfishkungfu.com. And it's going to be All just... Right. <laughs> it's gonna now be, you know. Now you know you're going to get a clip, right? Yeah, it's going to be just for when them fish decide to do their kung fu for the camera, or you know, just to slap somebody or whatever, and just for people to look through photos and rate them. And you know, I'm, I might give away a gift card or something for the top rated photos every six months or a year. But it's a, it's just going to be a fun site. You know, just look at pictures of the catfish doing their dance and doing their kung fu and. Yeah. Well, you ought to see if that's available, Catfish Kung Fu. Oh, it is. I've got the domain. Okay. I'm working on it right now. I'm getting the logo made. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll have it up and going. You could probably go there now and just see the general gist of it, but it's I not would ready like to yet. Get, I, I would like to get something made like uh, you have on your jersey, like a cartoon picture of myself. The, the caricature. Who who does that? Do you know, do you still talk to them, or do you do it, or? Oh no no no! I I paid somebody to do it. I think I I used to be in a crew. We called ourselves the Muncie Catfish Crew, and I had the guy, um, you know, do a caricature of all three of us in a boat catfishing, and I, I want to say I paid like a hundred dollars for it. Um, wow! Yeah, but it's something you can always use. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I kind of liked it. In cartoons, <laughs> be like a white fat Albert. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can, I can see it now. Munch, Chuck, you're too quiet over there. Uh, I'm just getting pumped up. I got a little tourney tomorrow, and I'm doing some strategy in my head. And then if I got everything ready, I got to get the boat hooked up here in a minute and pull out about three a.m. I got I got about a two hour drive. Where's that at? Then, uh, it's on the other side of the Alabama state line up on the uh, upper Coosa. It's above Weiss Lake. Mm. Uh, there's a small little tournament up there, and it's the same spot that they're going to be having a, uh, the Bass Pro Shop Big Cat Quest tournament the first part. So I just see this as a good opportunity for me to go up there and do a little pre fit for it. And just a little, Wasn't uh, there uh, <laughs> Wasn't there some kind of issue going on in the Coosa or something? I can't remember what it was about. It had to do with catfishing. Yeah, a bunch of guys uh, catching a lot of big flatheads and taking them out of the river. That's stupid. Is this a stretch of river you fished already before, Chuck? Uh, the one up in North Georgia? I've, I've never fished that stretch before, so this is something I need. And we'll get up there and check it out and see. You've been you've been sitting on Google Earth checking it out for for days on end, like I do. I, I yeah I, I viewed it a little bit, and luckily uh, Weiss Lake is one of the lakes that they let down uh, to a winter pool. They let it down about five or six feet. So um, Google Earth right now is uh, the photos are from winter time uh, scenarios, so I get to see really what the uh, water's like in the winter, actually. You know, most time you'll go and it'll be different than what it usually is. But I've been looking at the Navionics a pretty good bit and, you know, mapping some stuff out. Um, where we're putting in in Georgia, it's two miles into Alabama, which Alabama's got the 34-inch rule where you can't transport any catfish over 34 inches across state lines. So you can go fish over in Alabama, but if you catch any um, anything of any size, I won't be able to bring it back legally. So I'm just going to stay on the Georgia side and fish. It's a three-fish tournament. Way in over in Georgia, too? Yeah, we're, we're putting in in Georgia and um, the weigh-ins in Georgia. Yeah, that's what I do. Yep, 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 yep. Well, I don't know... Really anything I, I just else. want to see how this uh, the uh, Bass Pro uh, Big Cat Quest does it when they come up because um, we have had some tournaments 
uh, that border three states, even the waters border three states, and, and some guys have went on into other states and have brought across, um, you know, 34-inch catfish and weighed them in in another state before. Tennessee and Alabama both have a 34-inch uh, no transport law, um, and you know, even even though you can use your fishing license um, in a state agreement, like on Pickwick Lake that border Mississippi, Tennessee, and Alabama, um, you know, it, it don't say anything about transporting the fish across. It just says you can fish the water. So I don't know if if you can bring the fish across because you hold a fishing license or you know what. But I heard to go by the uh, the strictest states. What I've always heard. That's one way to keep you out of trouble. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if uh, Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois, and all them would follow suit with some of them states down there for the Ohio. They will yeah, eventually. We, <laughs> uh, we can hope. Yeah, Missouri is a statewide. There's not hardly any ramps over here at all. So they uh, they get that uh, 34 inch rule for the river and stuff over there. It's it's gonna knock the hell out of some of these uh, Illinois um, commercial fishermen anyway, because they won't be able to transfer that fish from there to over here. Yeah. Oh, one last thing, real quick, is I just got back from Cumberland City. For skipjack fishing, uh, three guys of us went over there, and we caught. We each caught our limit for the most part. We had we probably caught over 400 skipjack, but we were tossing the bigger ones back, and you know we kept our limit of 100 per person. So they were in there pretty thick at Cumberland City Power Plant. Yeah, if I knew these guys was being down there, and I had had a little heads up, I may have showed up. But I met this year. We didn't do anything going down there. So. What will they charge you for an eight day li uh, a one day license there? It's like ten bucks or something. I think yeah, I think a one day is ten. Yeah. Oh, it was eight, eight bucks. That ain't it, bad. It could be, but I know for if you print it out online, they charge you a fee to print. Like I, I yeah. think my three day license was it's supposed to be sixteen, but they added a three dollar fee, so it was nineteen to yeah, do it's it online. Yeah, doing it online. Yeah. It's the easiest way to do it, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not a bad price for Skipjack when they're selling it for $5 for a styrofoam cup full. Yeah, and that's even, like up here, way up north in Indiana, you can't you can't even find it in any, any of the places around here. So you get down to somewhere right on the Ohio River, you're paying 3 to $5 per Skipjack. I get caught using it anywhere other than the Missouri or Missouri, Mississippi. I'm screwed. I hope this year to, to, to figure out Moon Eye and start having fresh moon eye on hand if I can. That's that's the catfish candy up here. You talking about moon pie? <laughs> moon eye, gold eye. That big Dave like a moon pies. Yeah, and banana moon pies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to cut the live broadcast. Y'all take care, and until next time, if you ain't fishing, you ain't living.